All right, so on the way to Hagano, we decided to stop by a historical landmark called the Battle of Kawa Nakajima. That's where Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kinshin. Sounded right to me. That sounded right this time, yeah. yeah. Close enough. They, uh, they met on the battlefield here in, I believe, uh, 1564. Now, what happened between these two daimyos was they fought five different times over a span of about 12 years. So and, when they were... And the final fight, was, was it the final no, one? Not no, the this final. was number four. Okay, number four was on this field here. And there are a couple of rivers that run through, or a river that runs through, uh, and, and it splits and rejoins a few different spots along this basin. Yeah. But that battle was throughout this basin here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run inside the museum and catch it because uh, it looked amazing when we walked by. So we're going to go in, show you the museum, and then we're going to head on over to the other side of Nagano to where we're going to go to the 1998 site of the Nagano Olympics. And look for... 96? 98. 98. 98. And look okay. for a gold ring. And look for a gold ring. So stay tuned and watch everything. We'll be right back. Japan is a country with a long history and an amazing culture. Japan Treasure Hunters is on the quest to find it and bring it to you. In the great battle that took place here, Uesugi Kenshin found Takeda Shingen and attacked him from horseback. Without time to prepare, Shingen could only defend himself with his Goomba or his war fan. Kenshin struck three times, but Shingen managed to deflect each blow with his fan. After the battle, the fan was inspected and it's said to have had seven sword marks in it. Thus, this battle memorial is called Mitachi Nanatachi, or Three Strikes, Seven Mark. Yeah, top part of a helmet, a decorative piece. The Mai Tate. So, so this was the famous scene right here where uh, Kinshin broke through the line and this is the only time he had the chance and he was gonna strike Hakeda but he used a, 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 goom, a Goombai, a Goombai to block the sword strike. So that's like, oh. Now this I find kind of interesting. If you look at the helmet shape and stuff here, um, George Lucas and well, Ralph McQuarrie used a lot of Japanese design influence when they were creating the look and feel of the original Star Wars movie. And like the shape here is very reminiscent of, well, Darth Vader's helmet is very reminiscent of this shape because it was actually based on Japanese style armor and helmets. Fireworks launching tubes. Well, that's cool. So are these the balls? Yeah, launching these things. <laughs> Good lord. If you look down the tube, it looks like down to about here is the main hole, and then there's a smaller hole below that, which is probably loaded with uh, gunpowder and such. So they probably do have something down below that they can. So Robert, a couple months ago, I got a request through Facebook from one of our viewers asking. Oh, a friend request, nice. So you've got new friends. Yeah, I, I got one new friend. Okay. Um, so you have two now? Yeah, I have two. So we have uh, been asked to find a wedding ring at a ski resort. Is that like a needle in a haystack? I, I, would, I would think so, considering there was like four or five spots that she was at when she, uh, in her last spot, she crashed, broke some bones, so... Oh. Now, I actually worked in a ski resort up in Hokkaido for two and a half, 
two and a half years, so two winter seasons, and that's a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, I'm just glad that we actually have some some general spots to hit. So, are we gonna find it? I hope so, because that would be awesome if we can do that. Yeah. But Robert doesn't think we're gonna find it. I think that's a lot of ground to cover because it could be in those spots. It could have been dropped somewhere between those yeah. spots. And how do you lose a ring if you're skiing? Because wouldn't you have? Yeah. So according spins. to her, she was when she crashed, and they came to get her. They took off her gloves and uh, stuff to, like that to take a look at. Yeah. Them. Okay. So hopefully it's not too deep. I I don't. If we find it, it's not going to be deep. It's going to be real shallow. But okay. I'm ready to get started because we got about an hour drive ahead of us. You ready? Well, you have an hour drive. Yeah. I have an hour sleep in the car yeah, well, on the way to the. Yeah. 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 Like always. Like always. <laughs> Yeah, so we're we're looking for the ring, which we tested with another gold ring to kind of get what tone range we're looking for, and we're we're in that first parking lot where where our victim was uh, loaded into the ambulance. So that's that's a good place where it could possibly have been dropped off. And uh, you know, I'm swinging along, and uh, the coil hits hits right in the number range that I'm looking for. Not a ring, but I just found a 50 inch surface dweller. Got a tone in this area and just picked it up visually. Didn't even need the pinpointer. A little disappointed it wasn't the ring, but it was still a coin, which is better than a pull tab or bottle cap or whatever that we usually find. A lot of feet. Right here. So it's a little bit higher than the ring, but. Still gonna see what it is. Now, for being a place that's supposed to be padded, <laughs> there's a lot of rocks here. 100 yen. 100 yen? 100 yen. Yeah. Robert scores 100 yen. I score some trash. Yeah. Nice on Robert. So we went out to the little playground area, which wasn't a little, and it wasn't a playground area. It was more of a field, as you would. All right, so I'm pinging a tone right here. That's almost exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, so, so this one was really fun, this vine. Two inches deep. All right, so this could, this could be it. This could be it. It, it. it pinged exactly where we wanted it to ping at, 48, 49, 50. It was amazing. I, I'm getting excited because this, you know, ring already, and we'd only been detecting for probably about an hour, hour and a half. It was pinging perfect. It was at the perfect depth, two inches. I'm all excited. I'm getting down there. I want to find it. Digging around, digging around. There. there it is. Not the ring. It was a 100 yen coin. Oh. Hey, still 100 yen's 100 yen. Well, Robert, you were right. I was. You were right. It was needle in a haystack. Yeah, and the haystack is freaking huge. <laughs> well, we did hit the wrong time of year. Yeah, that is so, true. We want to thank you for stopping by, checking us out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and say nice things about me. Laugh at my jokes. Yeah, yeah. He, need, he needs the... The confidence building. Yes, yeah. yes, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in. Hey, can you do me a favor? We want to test the other mic. Can you do the honors of being the boom guy? Yeah. I'll give you some instructions, Boomer. It's like, should I hold it like this or should I do the whole? <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta get into it. All right, let me know when you're ready. All right, three, two, oh, chair. Three, two, oh, chair. I think you just push that over there. It'll be good. Yeah. Mike's not shot, is it? Not at all. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, car.
put that on camera if you <laughs> You did? <laughs> you ready? Yeah. So on the way over to Hagano, we decided to stop at a 1564 battle site called the Battle of Kawanakajima. Takeda Shingen and Uesugi, uh, yeah, Uesugi. And when did Uesugi. you point out the battlefield? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try that one again. Ready? Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't said anything yet, so it's all you. Come on, Robert. Get yourself together. So on the way to Hagano, we, uh, we decided to stop by a battle site from the Battle of Kawanakajima, which is, this is the site. It's a protected historical landmark, but still we want to stop by and see it. Basically what happened was Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kinshin came over here and they had, did I say that again? You did. Takeda Kinshin, I said that, didn't I? You did. Takeda Shingen. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> we got two hours and ten minutes worth of film left. Oh, okay, 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 cool. Oh, plenty of takes. Plenty yeah, of time. plenty of, plenty of takes. All right, so on the way to Hagano, we decided to stop by a historical landmark called the Battle of Kawa Nakajima. That's where Takeda Shingen and Uesugi Kinshin... Sounded right to me. That sounded right this time, yeah. yeah. Close enough. 